ഓക്കെ സ്പീക്കർ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യായിരിക്കും പെട്ടെന്ന് തന്നെ അപ്പൊ അതിന് മുന്നേ നമുക്ക് കെ ടി പി ഐ കുറിച്ചൊരു രണ്ട് സെന്റൻസ് പറയാം കെ ടി പി ഐ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കേരള തിയറട്ടിക്കൽ ഫിസിക്സ് ഇനീഷ്യേറ്റീവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഇനീഷ്യേറ്റീവ് നമ്മുടെ നമ്മുടെ കുറച്ച് പോസ്റ്റ് ഡോക്സും പി എച്ച് ഡി സ്റ്റുഡൻസും അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഇപ്പൊ കറന്റ്ലി റിസർച്ചിൽ ആക്റ്റീവ് ആയിട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഫാക്കൽറ്റീസ് ഒക്കെ ചേർന്നിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഓർഗനൈസേഷൻ ആണ് കേരളത്തിലെ തിയറട്ടിക്കൽ ഫിസിക്സിൽ ഒരു കുറച്ചുകൂടി നല്ല രീതിയിലുള്ള റിസർച്ച് നടക്കണം നല്ല രീതിയിലുള്ള പഠനങ്ങൾ നടക്കണം എന്നുള്ള ആഗ്രഹത്തോടെ കൂടി ചേർന്നിട്ടുള്ള കുറച്ച് റിസർച്ചസ് ആണ് ഞങ്ങൾ അപ്പൊ കേരളത്തിലെ അങ്ങനെ ഒരു സാഹചര്യം ഉണ്ടാക്കാൻ വേണ്ടി എന്തൊക്കെ ചെയ്യാം എന്നുള്ള ഇതാണ് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഞങ്ങൾ അതിനെ കുറിച്ചാണ് പഠിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് അതിനുവേണ്ടിയുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ടാണ് നമ്മളിങ്ങനെ ഒരു ലെക്ചർ സീരീസ് നടത്തുന്നത് നമ്മൾ അല്ലാതെ മറ്റു പല കാര്യങ്ങളും സ്റ്റുഡൻസിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ട്രെയിനിങ്ങുകളും മറ്റു പല കാര്യങ്ങളും ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് ലെക്ചർ സീരീസുകൾ നടക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അതിന്റെ ഒരു പാർട്ടായിട്ടാണ് ഇന്നൊരു ലെക്ചർ നോബൽ പ്രൈസ് ഫിസിക്സിലുള്ള നോബൽ പ്രൈസിന് നോബൽ പ്രൈസിന് വേണ്ടി കിട്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ആ ഒരു വർക്കിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഇന്നൊരു ലെക്ചർ സംഘടിപ്പിക്കാൻ തീരുമാനിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ എല്ലാവർക്കും ഇതിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം മധു ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തോ കൃഷ്ണ കാണുന്നുണ്ടോ ഓക്കെ അങ്ങനെയാണെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് പെട്ടെന്ന് തന്നെ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്യാം ഒരു അഞ്ച് മിനിറ്റ് വൈകി എന്ന് വിചാരിക്കുന്നു കുഴപ്പമില്ല പത്ത് മിനിറ്റ് വൈകി കൃഷ്ണ ഒന്ന് സ്പീക്കറെ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാവോ ഹലോ ഹായ് മധു ുംസിക്സ് and then went on to obtain his phd from the rice quantum institute at the same university after completing postdoctoral stints at the silicon quantum computing group university of wisconsin madison and the quantum phenomena department sandia national laboratory both in the us he joined the school of physics isa tiruvananthapuram in 2012 his research interests include quantum transport high frequency measurements solid state qubits devices on van der waals materials and topological insulators Once again, let me express our gratitude to have Professor Madhu with us today and invite him to enlighten us about the spooky action that bothered Einstein, but which probably makes him very happy in his work. Over to you, Professor Madhu. Um, good morning. Um, I'm sorry that I uh, kind of lost track of the time and I can't hear anything here. So if... if you cannot hear please you know uh, somebody call me or you know send a, send a text message or something i can't hear anything from here okay so many 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 thanks uh, to organizers for you know giving me this uh, opportunity to present uh, you know this uh, talk about this year's uh, you know nobel prize and uh, well, i'm madhu i'm from mysore toronto and i work on mostly with the electron transport not with photons very much and uh, but today's talk i will take you through this year's um, in a novel prize in a very i would say in a very low level way because it will not have a lot of um, a lot of mathematical derivations or anything but just so that everybody can kind of you know understand or enjoy the the concepts okay all right so um the one second all right so um just just to give you a primer on this um, uh, quantum theory i am assume i assume that all of you have at some point of time you know heard about or done this uh, young uh, double slit experiment 
Um, the idea here is you have a light source and you have two slips and it's going to, I'm sorry, yeah, it's going to produce, you know, a fringe pattern somewhere on the, on a screen, which is like a space that is at a distance slightly apart. And the fringe, fringe pattern will look something like this. And um, this is this this whole idea of this interference fringes. You can understand from the Huygens, you know, wave theory, where you have you know these light waves passing through these three slits, and they undergo superposition and form the stretch. Okay. Now, as for quantum theory, it is applicable to you know microscopic systems, as electrons, nucleons, photons, atoms, molecules, such as. There is something called wave particle duality. That means they can behave like particles and they can also behave like waves. Now let's look at this Young's double slit experiment and reduce the intensity of light and what happens. When you reduce it, you will see a reduced you know, intensity for the fringe pattern. But what happens at very low light intensity? Say, say you have a light which which actually can emit photons by photons, few photons at a time, and what you would see is something like this, where this um, interference pattern will be is, will be built up photons by photons. So at first it look completely random, and as time goes, um, this interference patterns will build up over time, and you can see eventually you will reach the same interference pattern at some point of time, maybe many many hours or many days from. So what this actually is telling you is the light at first it looks like it's Behind kind of random, but eventually it is building some, some a pattern, a wave like pattern. Similar interference experiments have conducted the electrons also, where you can use like few number of electrons first, then you increase, you know, you wait over time, and eventually you will get interference pattern of an electron, which is very similar to interference pattern of light. And people have also have done the same similar experiment with large molecules, like 58 atom molecules such as these 32 h18 and a these kind of things and we also have we can also we see this kind of interference pattern even water in in real life here this, this is a google earth image taken somewhere in thailand where you can see the two boat engines they actually when they start they create water wave you know water waves and they undergo interference so this interference is actually a property of wave nature but what we are seeing is we are getting this interference pattern, you know, from particle waves also here. So what actually, what is the wave, the question, basic question is, what is the wave we are talking about? What is the wave nature here? Okay, so, um, the, the idea here is, the particles are always, or the, I should not even say the particle, the concept of particle, the entities, such as photons, electrons, protons, or neutrons, they are always detected as particle, but their distribution is like a wave. Or where would you see the particle? You know, that actually has a wave characteristics, that probability. So if you look at this, um, you know, this first, image, first uh, picture here is that of a sonometer where you have a string vibrating and it, it sets up standing waves. Okay. And the amplitude of this, um, uh, string vibration is given by this wave function a sine n pi x pi f, which we all know. These are very basic equations. Okay. In a similar way, the, when you talk about this uh, wave nature for electrons or wave nature for, for, for photons, what it actually tells you is the probability of finding that photons or electrons at certain point in the space that actually has a wave nature. The probability has a wave nature. Okay. Now. We also saw from the sonometer experiment that the moment you put constraints on a dimension or confinement, you have discrete number of modes. Okay, so here the best example is particle in a box problem, which you all have actually you know, done in your intro, intro quantum mechanics, where the moment you put a particle in a box, it's wave, this way this uh, energy the moment I'm everything it quantized. And it act, the behavior is defined by something called a wave function. And this wave function tells you, square of this wave function tells you where um, the, where, 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 what, what location in the inside the box is, you have maximum probability and minimum probability to find the particle. 
another so what the take home message from here is the moment you put a confinement you naturally you get a discreteness to the behavior to the physical to the the dynamical properties of the particle another example for you know discreteness because of confinement is a natural atom where electrons confine an atom actually gets you know discrete discrete energy states this is a bohr atom model okay this is these are one of the you know first first uh, you know you know initial concepts of quantum mechanics so what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to introduce a few concepts so that we can walk into the pro today's problem okay so what we have done now is we have wave, there's naturally there is a wave nature associated particle the wave nature is actually to the probability where you find it okay the moment we actually tell the word probability we have the trouble and the trouble starts because probability has some random nature to it whenever we say there's a statistical nature there's a probability there is a chance okay so that is where the trouble is let's look at this problem a little bit more okay so i have a um, particle in a box problem here that means i put a particle in a box and that particle has certain um, energy certain momentum it does not belong to any of these three states okay not ground state or excited state some state now naturally we you know that we can write that energy of the particle which as a combination of the three states here the state of the particle belongs as a combination of say a1 psi1 a2 psi2 and a3 psi3 something like that okay now what you have done mathematically is you actually put it in terms of its fourier components that's what you did mathematically but conceptually what you have done is the particle inside box is actually a superposition of three states okay that's the word is actually the particle can be have like any of these states okay as a ground state or excited state or any of these excited state that means the superposition of these three states now you would you can ask a question that classically or what is if i take a measurement of the momentum or a measurement of the, of the energy of the particle what result i will get okay so classically we know that you put a particle with a well defined energy or well defined moment okay and you should be getting that value back okay. but the quantum measurement theory says there is no sure answer so what it says is you will get the you will you will measure the momentum of ground state or first two excited states with a probability given by a1 square or a2 square or a3 square these are the coefficients in this equation here that means if you conduct infinite number of measurements if you conduct n number of measures every time you get only one of these values not an average of these values you get only one of these but the probability to get any of these values is given by this a1 square a2 square a3 square that's what the uh, quantum measurement theory says okay what that means is there is like it's almost like you know uh, tossing a die or it's a it's a chance this is something troubled people like einstein who is one of the founding you know members of quantum quantum mechanics the quantum theory but he used quantum mechanics to explain you know, photo electric effect he like the idea of the quantized energy and photons and the, the photo electric effect he, for which he got nobel prize was explained using the concept of photons okay so he like all those things but he had trouble with this 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 uh, statistical interpretation okay and that's the that's the that was the issue okay now quantum measurement also says one more thing okay quantum measurement will disturb the system so let's go back to your original young uh, double slit experiment okay where you have light source and if you look at here there are two detectors that i we you know we have put here to figure out where the light is going to the double slit experiment eventually is explained as you have electron or photon now quantum theory you have to talk about you know electrons or photons not just like plain waves okay now they can go to either the light right slit or the left slit the probability given by this respective wave function but what you get on the screen is an interference of the two probabilities okay probability in the in, in the, that means you take two probability add two probability and square it that square is what you see 
because that is actual probability. Probability amplitude is there. Then you will get the interference pattern. But the moment you try to figure it out or measure which state the photon has passed through or what are certain instances, the moment, if you do that, the moment the pattern will disappear. That means you are, when the act of you trying to measure is actually disturbing the system. If you turn off the detectors, you, the patterns will come back. And this is well tested, well verified in various systems. Okay. So the another similar situation is that I have a random spin state, a random electron spin. Okay. That I can write in random direction. I can write an up a combination of up and down. Okay. When you do, do up and down, you get you can when you vectorial submit, you can get any random direction depending upon the amplitude. A and A and B. Same thing applies to light polarization. Polarization. Okay. Same thing. You can do that. Now, this is a standard like you know, some analyzer which actually analyzes what spin is going through. Okay. Now, every spin. Say, assume that that's an electron spin. When it passes through, either that will give an up state or a down state. It will not give you any average of this. Either it will say that electron is up or that electron is up with the probability A square or B square. So what we are seeing is the from the double slit experiment and also from this experiment, the quantum measurement will give you only one of the state. Okay. And what state is going to give you the quantum measurements as per the measurement theories in operation. Okay. And its operators are actually square matrices in quantum mechanics, if you remember. And these square matrices have its own eigenvalues. So each measurement, quantum measurement, is like getting one of its eigenvalue with the probability A square or B square. You get up, in this case, up with A square and down with B square. So that is the probability that you're going to get. So again, we are talking about the probability, okay? So not only that, there is very, very crucial information that it's going to collapse the system to one of the against state. The moment you try to figure out which street the photon has gone through, you will get only that, okay? Initially, it was a full proportion of both of these. Here, again, here, the moment you try to measure what spin state it is, you're going to do a super proportion of this, you will get only one of these. That means the act of you doing the measurement is going to disturb the system or it's going to collapse the original super proportion wave function or reduce that wave, that wave function or the state to one of the eigenstates states of the measurement apparatus. So these are this is a very, very crucial theory, a standard one of theory or you know, in part of Copenhagen interpretation, which actually Einstein had see the stubble data. Okay, there's one more thing. How does this actually disturb the system? This is um, an excerpt from one of the first paper from Hazelberg. And uh, this is not a spelling mistake. This is actually a word. I don't know how to pronounce that. But then when I was searching for the meaning for this one, it's on the, this content of quantum theoretical kinematics and me mechanics. And the Hazelberg says on the perceptible content and the physical content, somebody else translate that word into, or there are various you know, translations. Too. But what exactly about the physical content of the quantum you know, kinematics or quantum mechanics? That's what it says. Okay. So the, in, the essential idea here is this also we have, we all have gone through. When you try to detect the position of certain microscopic objects, such as an electron using a photon, it's going to impart some momentum onto it. And will disturb its position or momentum for a later measurement. Okay, so that's what it is. So any quantum measurement process will add minimum amount of noise, and there is a minimum noise to it. And uh, for position and momentum, delta x delta p is h bar is the minimum value. And energy and time, there is another minimum value. The number and phase normally this applies to both, basically for uh, the bosonic systems. So number and phase delta and delta phi is greater than h bar. Again, you get this uncertain relation, and these pair of um, you know, dynamical variables, position or momentum, energy or time, number of phase, these are actually called conjugate variables. And this is what N. A. Hesenberg actually you know, proposed. So 
now we have we have we are coming to a point where the quantum measurement is going to give you only statistical values and secondly it is actually going to disturb the system to and reduce the system to one of its eigen state these are the two take home points that what we have now um now the issue is einstein did not like or did not agree to any of this and there is a you know explosive article in new york times einstein attacks quantum theory and um, what he was saying this is one of this is an old picture where bohr and einstein were very friendly but later they were they are a lot of heated arguments you know over this especially over this um, you know interpretations of quantum mechanics and what einstein told is statistical nature that is like it's a game it's a game of luck so god does not play dice that's what he, you know he was referring to um for, for example in this case what spin state you get is just a probability you don't know what you are going to get okay and um, another issue what he also had is this position and moment this measurement you know you know we can you know, cannot measure certain certain parameter accurately he believes in actually accuracy and realism local realism that means if you if there is some if there is a measurable quantity there is a realistic quantity or the parameter is there then you should be able to do it otherwise it is not real okay and um, what his statement is a pair of complementary observables such as position and momentum to be measured exactly and simultaneously this is something which quantum mechanics could not explain why you cannot do it so what he was saying is the physical whole discussion of physical reality should be, should be explained you can explain it you know completely but quantum mechanics is not able to do it because it is not complete that's what his interpretation was and in 1935 einstein along with podolsky and rosen wrote an article and also proposed an experiment okay so it's interesting to read this abstract of this one so the main points are here there should be an element of reality and locality that means if there's a property particle has it should be real and that should be local and you should be able to measure it okay you should not predict the outcome with certainty without disturbing the system so when you do that you should not disturb the system you that is that's another point and discussion of reality even by wave functions incomplete that means the way the current quantum theory especially the measurement postulate says that you can measure the but the measurement the measurement outcomes are actually only probabilistic or statistical in nature that is because it's a wave function of the information that we have is incomplete there are hidden information that's what is the hidden variable hidden information which we don't have access to at all that is the reason why we are not doing it so the quantum theory is not giving you the full picture there is a, there is some issue okay that's what he is saying and um, let me also very briefly give you one version of this um, what his proposal is say you have created two particles with certain you know relations certain well defined relations between them okay and say for example So to you know objects okay, they are sent to really distant places to the left and to the right very very far apart okay so that you can measure these you know without we can conduct a measurement on on the system on the on the left that is first without affecting the system on the right and you send it so far apart that you can do these two measurements two measurements on each on each system faster than the speed of light because that is the fastest signal that you can transmit okay. so the idea here is you take it so far apart and you do a position measurement you do a momentum measurement of one of the particles say and because of the initial momentum zero condition you start at the same point and you shoot it in the opposite direction you can basically say the accurate the accuracy what is the momentum of the particle on the right and and what you do is and you also do a measurement of position on the other particle 
and you can tell what is the post order what for second part so what you do is you do this two measurement of two conjugate uh, observable that's position momentum in a time span which is much much shorter than the light can actually travel between so there is no way that some kind of communication channel is open between those two and okay i i got this um, uh, momentum information from here but the positive information of that i get from other some uh, some from the other particle so that you can get both very really accurately because you are not disturbing the system you get position from one momentum from one okay so this is the argument so now what actually both told is you can't do that because these are two complementary observables but actually there was also more did what what from the documents from the paper what we understand more did not give a complete information complete expression to this one he explained with the measurement of a single particle using a complementary principle but he did not explain using the two particle no it is the same apr scenario that's what more did not do okay and incidentally i also want to mention one more thing that this epr paper the very famous epr paper which questions the the completeness of quantum mechanics is the last paper i have published in physical review because after that he sent another paper in 1936 on general theory related to the um, uh, rosen and that the reviewer told some correction but which he did not like and he published after that he never sent a single paper to physical review and that paper was published somewhere else but and suddenly the whatever the correction the reviewer of told was also you know correct so he corrected that later and sent it to another another publisher but this is the cpr paper is the last paper um, einstein has uh, published the physical review okay that's what that's by the best of my understanding and uh, so now coming back to this uh, hidden variable theory this happened in 1935 okay and so far people have been using quantum mechanics for all kinds of measurements and which is giving results pretty much very accurately without any problem but there is there is no way to test how do you do something which is really faster than light and we have to take it so far so apart and uh, make sure that you can you do so two measurements and you know really really fast so there is practical difficulty and this is 1935 but it's not current times okay there are practical issues practical difficulty one second light is gone okay practical difficulty in doing this so it went on time went on and this happened in 1935 people were using quantum mechanics to predict various uh, you know explain various situation and then in 1964 um the famous um, physicist john stuart bell um came up with a thought experiment or proposal how to test this Recurrence of local realism. That means there is some local property, realistic property associated with everything. This thing. Okay. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail of this original proposal, but I'll try to explain what is um, what is the best way to understand what is one of the best way to understand this thing. Okay. So what I have is um, three sets of analyzers the polarizer and analyzer which actually test you know we can rotate the plane plane of polarization of the light okay and we know that if photon come with the uh, its polarization aligned with the polarizer or another analyzer will pass through if it is coming 90 degree you know oriented with respect to the analyzer it will be completely blocked and 45 degree there is a 50 50 chance to go pass through or you know get blocked okay so the chance of going through a polarizer goes like a sin square theta where theta is the or the angle subtended by the polarization with respect to polar, the polarization of the photon with respect to the analyzer and sin square theta is the chance that it gets blocked because total is one sin square theta plus cos square theta is one and 45 degree both are same so you have um, a uh, 1 by 2 1 by 2 chance okay. half chance to go and half chance to get blocked now let us look at i have a photon which randomly polarized and i'm going to do three sets of measurement one a polarization which is vertical one next another measurement which is at the angle theta any theta okay i'm just take three angles 
another second one, a third polarizer is at an angle 2p with respect to the vertical. And this polarization of the photon is completely unknown. We don't know what it is. Okay. Now, whenever the photon hit any of this polarizer first, because it's a random polarization, okay, so there is actually a 50-50 chance of going through or getting blocked. So if you look at that way, the chances or the probability for passing A but blocked by B, the passing A is 1 by 2, because the first one is always 1 by 2. Second one B is the angle between A and B, that is sin square theta. Similarly, you can write another probability of passing um, polarizer B, but block by C, that is again, they again don't differ by angle theta. So that will be half sine square theta. Now, a third probability that passing A, but block by B, A node C, this is A node B, B node C, A node C. Okay. That is again, A is 1 by 2, but now C is at an angle 2 theta with respect to the, the vertical. So that means 1 by 2 sine square 2 theta. So now what Bohr says, if there is, sorry, what the bell says, if there is, if there are there are hidden variables, what that means is there are certainty and local realism, then the probability of passing A block by B plus probability of passing B block by C add two together, that should be greater or equal to the probability of passing A block by C. Okay. So what that means is, this is half sine square theta, this is again half sine square theta, this is half sine square 2 theta. So what this, if, we, if I convert this indication, what it says is half sine square, sine square theta plus half sine square theta, that will be sine square theta, and that should be greater than or equal to half sine square 2 theta. If you try to plot it, that is, these are the, you know, the Venn the, the diagrams, but um, I mean, just for, for some around this graph here, that is much easier to understand. So if you look at that, we see very clearly that this condition is not met in this small region, which is encircled by this red, you know, and enclosed by the red circle. Okay. So in this case, what we are saying that this condition is not met. This is the experimental reality. This is how it happens. Okay. So what that means is there are this more theorem can be tested using this um, um, experiments using photons, okay, polarized photons, entangled. So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to use that word entangled right now, but photons, that is the idea. Okay. So now, if you conduct n number of experiments and look at what is the distribution, and from that you can figure it out whether there is a, there are hidden variables or not. If there are hidden variables, then the quantum theory is incomplete. If there are not hidden variables, then not only the quantum theory is complete, there is some other interaction is going on between these two, uh, the two particles. That's what I said. Okay. So, okay. So, this interaction between these two particles or two photons or two electrons, which are sent apart, like, you know, like you know, very, very, really distant places, distant galaxies. That is actually called entanglement. So, who coined the term the Schrodinger in 1935, the same year the EPR paradox came, EPR paper, EPR paper came, coined the word this entanglement. What that means, there are some things which is classically you cannot think about. That's what he was saying. So, that enforces its entire departure from classical lines of thought. That's what his words actually. And he and by the interaction, the two representatives have become entangled. He is the person who used the word entangled. Now, what are the examples of uh, you know entangled states around us? We can take entangled states are actually two systems which actually have some certain relationship between them, so that if you change one, other one also will change to keep the relationship you know, intact. Whereas if I take two spin states, spin up and down, which I have represented zero or one, and um, that the total spin, you can say the total spin can be one or total spin can be zero. Depend that these are entangled states. For example, if I change flip one spin, other one will automatically get flipped. Okay. So or if I change the polarization of one photon, the other polarization also will change. So there is a set relationship between two, you know, two particles. This and there is some kind of communicator channel which is 
I would say it's it's not a instant communication. It's kind of they are behind like one system. It's not like two systems. You cannot consider them two different systems. So they are kind of and they are entangled completely, depend on each other. So the two parties that would normally you can think of as distinct entities are not independent. That's the idea. They are completely dependent on each other. That is the idea of entanglement. Okay. It's not like a superposition. Superposition is different. Superposition is you put a particle and it, it actually can be this is state can be distributed in different you know, situations, different states. The entanglement is actually the the two particles are not in there are two systems, but they are not independent. They are completely correlated. Okay. So there is some kind of correlation or some kind of um, you know current communication is going all the time between them. Okay, that is that is what it is. Okay. Now, so how do we test it? So we already you know, mentioned that you can test it using the polarization of you know, photons. Okay. So what these three eminent physicists who got Nobel Prize this year, right? The professor, John Closer and Alan Aspect and uh, uh, Anton Selinger is they used correlated photons. They are entangled and they analyzed using analysis with the different uh, you know orientation and figured out that there is always a relation between them between them and their coincidence whatever they measure that always actually exceeded the bell's condition or always violated bell inequality so here um in this first case this um um, um john 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 closer what he did is he, if you look at this diagram carefully, these are the corresponding papers. I'm not going to explain it too much. And uh, but the idea here is you have a cesium calcium oven, which actually produces you know photon pairs, and they are sent you know diametrically on, on, you know, opposite. And there are polarizers on each side, and they check polarizers of one, each of them and uh, look at what is the correlation between them. Okay. And that what they say is the final line is our data in agreement with the quantum mechanics violate this restriction to high statistical accuracy. This is providing strong evidence against local hidden variable theory. This came out in 1972. And uh, but there are some issues with this one, this experiment, because it's a very local experiment. And uh, the the way this experiment was set up, the criticism was the the these two analysers could actually, I mean, these are at the, at the same time analysers also. They can actually communicate each other, so they know, uh, know somehow these measurements are not completely independent. Okay, process are not completely independent. Then, Alan aspect, what he did is he used a set of two these two analyzers are completely. You know, they are switched at random, and uh, they can look at um, you know what is the coincidence for these you know, these two measurements, and uh, what uh, completely random actually. Okay. So it so then in that case, what happens? You always measure. You always say you get that these two are always always correlated, and uh, again it violates Bell's inequality. And um, Anton Seelinger he went one more step ahead. Okay, so there are two sources. Okay, there are two sources. Each emits a pair of photon. They are correlated. And there is, and what you do is you pick one from each and do something called a bell state measurement. What that means is you kind of put these in, in some kind of, you know, in some, some angle state, bell state measurement. Then what he found is these two outgoing photons, one and four here, you put do two and three in a bell state, uh, you know, bell state measurement, and you see that one and four is actually getting correlated. Or there is an entanglement between two. That means you can actually transfer the entanglement from one place to other place. So this is actually called quantum teleportation. So you take you know one pair, and after some time, somewhere some somewhere distance, you take you take this photon and do a well state measurement on another one. This entanglement can be transferred to something else. So this is actually opens so up. This actually opens up this quantum you know, communication channels, teleportation channels, where you can send information in a highly entangled, you know, highly you know, secretive way to distant places without losing its, you know, you know, conduct. So this is the contribution from 
the Anton Seelinger. So these three people, for their work uh, on this quantum entanglement of photons, have been awarded this year's Nobel Prize, which you already know. And uh, one more thing, what Anton Seelinger did is something called you know, cosmic bell test or cosmic entanglement. So to avoid any kind of locality in the measurement, okay. So in conventionally, these measurements are done in lab environments with space-like, okay. There, so idea here is you don't want any kind of communication happening between these two at the speed of light. So you take something which you really, really far apart, okay, light years apart, okay. Then use that to basically time these measurements to measurements. So that's what um, that's what Selinger and team did. So what happened is they took a light coming from distant stars, distant star, and used that to trigger these measurements. Okay, that has started. If you look at where the light is coming from, it started at least six hundred years back. Okay. So if there is any correlation, any combination ha happening between these two measurements, that would have happened 600 years back. So that means that is impossible, okay? Because you are measuring right now, but uh, in, the thing that you are using to correlate the two measurements is something which, uh, a photon which originated 600 years back. That is actually, on, oh, you know, that's an impossible situation. So this something called, then still, if there is some hidden variable or communications going, that is something called, we can say, something cosmic conspiracy. Okay. So I think um, with this uh, closing uh, slide, I think I am done with my presentation. And um, I think we can have discussion if somebody is interested. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madhu, for the wonderful talk. Uh, now the time is for questions. So please ask questions. If you have questions, uh, you can unmute and ask uh, your questions or you can just type in the chat box. Okay, so questions. Uh, hello, Professor Madhu. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask one question. Are they the uh, measurement in the garden uh, Like when you do a measurement, uh, it disturbs the system. Uh, but recently, all karikan in the where a valare had even disturbed the measurement. Like uh, weak measurements. Are they the something that you want to say? Uh, Krishna, Madhu, Kelkan and I was not hearing anything actually. Nothing was coming through my eye actually. Uh, something was coming here. Now I can hear. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, yes. Uh, so, were, 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 were there a lot of questions in the middle which I missed actually? Uh, Krishna, I okay. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Professor Madhu, uh, and then Chuicha. Yeah, so measurement in a kurcha parnay mille. So ipo pudiya quantum technology ko achchatta. Adigam system thine disturb yatha measurement de chyan alkar nokun andan the kattandi weak measurement na kalla terms ko kattandi. Is there something that you want to say about that? Ah, parayam parayam parayam. Adu when parayam gaya thene naan gaya. Chengal thele vada stronga thora ke na rupee pona na the. When and when mule new student de yude chayda na thora na. Adu thora parka thayer na pulle de. The photon system is working in the electron system, the confined electrons for spin qubits measurement and realization. So, the minimum measurement in the concept in the concept in the range, you have to measure it before the system decoder. There is a time scale, for example, if you have set the spin of an electron in a certain direction or a two spin into a certain you know, state. Yeah. So you have to, there is a natural decoherent system. 
the rate of decoherence. Uh, second nana, millisecond nana, nana. How can you measure really fast, but repeatedly? So you don't basically, very fast, you do many multiple measurements really, really fast before this before hitting the decoherence rate. So there is a rate that you are going to, if you're electrically speaking or experimentally speaking, but whenever you do a measurement, there is some signal that you are going to, electromagnetic signal that you are going to put in the system. Okay. If that frequency is actually somehow matches the inherent decurrence frequency, then you will be you will decur system highly. So the idea here is you do really, really fast measurements, quick measurements, but very fast measurement. Then you can actually get away with minimum decoherence or non people say quantum non demolition called QNB, quantum non demolition measurement. That's the idea. You do really, really fast measurement. That is the idea. Hello. Uh, yes, thank you, Professor. Okay, any other questions? Madhu, uh, this last slide is a cosmic conspiracy. I am working in cosmology related career. I am interested in the field. 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 There is something local there which is going to, you know, which we don't understand also. Okay. So, the idea is light source coming from somewhere else. We don't control, you know, its, it's timing or randomness. Okay. We don't control It's coming from somewhere. From our galaxy, uh, our light to be which the what they did is they uh, you know controlled this uh, measurement process, and still they were able to you know show that uh, the Bellini inequality is violated. Okay. Okay. The Bell inequality is violated on the rainbow. The hidden variables theory wrong on in the other matron. I think. Uh, something else, uh, quantum mechanics incomplete and complete and another hidden variable theory. Wrong, other is a very good thing. 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 Other is a Mm -hmm. Whatever quantum mechanics say, you will do, you will get it. There's nothing which has violated so far. The quantum mechanics true on the line of proof on the video. As such, the mm -hmm. ultimate theory on the proof on the I said, there's nothing written like that. Like Even Schrodinger education was just written like that. There's no proof. We cannot prove it. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not a normal wave equation as the way you write. It's a first order time and second order space. Uh, this is, this, that's not the wave, normal wave equation. Uh, about, um, so, एवरीथिंग <laughs> Um, the inherent randomness, I think that is more fundamental than quantum mechanics. No, 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 that, is, that is how we should think about it. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. We quantum mechanics, David Bohm uh, theory, in the interpretations are okay, different. Uh, other something different, I know, the quantum usual uh, Bohr interpretation. Uh, uh, different title interpretation on uh, bomb interpretation uh, uh, bomb I really it uh, uh, bomb interpretation or I don't think I can elaborate right now I don't I don't have uh, anything prepared for that but um, uh, uh, uh. Uh, hello professor Madhu yes 
ha so just i wanted to know like uh, can you put i mean i am not very related to the field but uh, if you can put some thing about the hidden variables in a layman to i mean like hmm. if possible so thinking. yeah yeah so uh, see let's that um, what the idea here is so um let's go back to here okay so this you can still see my slide right uh yeah yes. so, uh, yeah yeah so no this i mean this is i don't have any specific slide for it i'm just trying to, to get some help from this slide so um whenever you do a measurement it the the, the observation is you always collapse the system to one of its eigen state that's one thing second thing there is always a randomness for how you measure it a measurement um if if you go back to your particle in a box problem you put a particle in a box in three in a superposition of three states then what the measurement will give you what state uh, there is no there is it's always probabilistic there is nothing certainty about it okay so but einstein was saying that it cannot be like that because there should be nature cannot play or god cannot play you know dice cannot play games there should be something certain about it so there is something which we don't understand even the quantum theory is not capturing the full details of the system there are some some more variables some more information hidden somewhere and he you know he also did not know what it is he was saying we, for a philosophical point of view it cannot be incomplete i mean there is some, there should be completeness and there should be local local realism local reality but the the but the idea is we don't know what that is and there are some variables hidden which we can we are not able to find it out that's the, that is the concept and then bell told if there is the local local realism in the clear initial state clear final state where the where the photon has come through what orient what progress it had if there is a clear the measurement is not affecting it okay the whole idea of um, uh, this again this slide the whole idea what you, the way you you get this uh, sin square theta what happens after measurement after measurement that photon will collapse onto that uh, that uh, orientation of the polarizer right so that in measurement is actually disturbing so what i say is measurement cannot disturb because particle should have certain polarization or certain moment or certain energy and your measurement process should not disturb that should not dictate that that is what that is what uh, einstein's einstein's theory and that is what uh, uh, bell assumed also for this for this you know for this on this paper for his paper okay but experiment would be completely different okay Uh, so, uh, so sir, uh, so let me put it in my own words. Like, is it something like yeah. it's trying to uh, the classical nature of everything is there? It exists there. Then uh, that we we can't even uh, really find out the exact mechanism. Is that the case? No, 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 no. The classic. No, that's not what it is. That's what I know. It's not about classical or classical words. Called them. It's about certainty. Okay, a certainty. There should be. For example, if you have created a particle which. and it it send it out okay this should have certain momentum certain state certain you know when you measure it that should not change the I, i the outcome should not depend on the measurement that is the idea for okay, if i measure now i'll get one variable measure and it'll go to one state then if i measure after some time i it, i'll get another variable another result outcome and it'll go to some other state you know because the measurement theory says you always collapse the system onto one of the eigen state and the corresponding eigen value is what you get okay that cannot be the case that is what i have seen said but that is how it is oh okay sir thank you okay yeah uh, professor mathu uh, so yeah. i had something to say about e uh, bohms in bohm in the you know kurichu or karyam parayanadunu and then i'll ask him hmm. hey, 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 uh, please please that, uh, uh, so what i understand is this adhaidu uh, bohm has a theory so bohmian mechanics la namaki bell explain like explain cheyan pattern thana njan maslakuna but uh, the mm. problem is the bohmian theory it is a non local theory adhaid it's supposed to be a non local hidden variable theory apo uh, mm. mm. uh, compared to what was einstein's expectation that there should be local realism uh, okay I, it, i think it says that uh, bohmian theory it is real probably there is realism but it is non local mm. അങ്ങനെയാണ് അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് നോൺ ലോക്കൽ ആണെന്ന് ഡെഫിനറ്റ് ആണ് റിയൽ ആണെന്നാണ് എനിക്ക് ത
okay uh, at least that is what i've heard that it's a non local mm. hidden mm. 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 Uh, then uh, the question that i wanted to ask was the following um, uh, if, uh, now all the experiments that you have mentioned uh, they are using photons right i mean these are all photon yep. Yep, yes, uh, yes. So, like, materials like electrons are quite chatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, electrons are not an excellent model. I mean, the parallel is our server line because it's all this side, right? Photonic side. So, that is why I didn't go into that. So, electrons, is, uh, we can talk for hours, actually. There's so many interesting features and experiments happening in electrons, which we also do. And uh, this is the, 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 you know, we work in the same field. So, um, I, I just want to point out to a paper which. Uh, Came in nine in 2019, uh, sorry, 1990s. I have to, I have to look at the paper title is um, uh, which path detector. Okay, so what you have is let me see whether I have it somewhere here. If, if you have time, it's one second. Let me figure it out. Um, then I should be able to show you that. Okay, okay. there you go. It's here. So if you look at, I, I, I think you can see my page, right? Okay. So uh, it's actually, we cannot, can you uh, see something? No, we just see your slide. Slides are not in there. Uh, 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 cosmic conspiracy. Well, ah, okay, okay. Let me show something else. Okay, I'll show you this. Okay. I'll show you one example. This is interesting, actually. Post, it's not, so it's not shifting the slide that is the issue. Can you see a slide right now? Uh, it's still the same cosmic conspiracy. Oh, okay. 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 Maybe, Maybe you can it. stop sharing and share. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I think, it's worth uh, looking at this one. Okay. Share. No. Yes. Yes. Now we can see. Okay. No. Okay. So this is a very famous experiment, and um, so what? This is an electron, this is a nanoscale system where you have, assume that you have these two dotted lines. It's like a Young's double slit experiment. The electron originated from the emitter can go to the collector. It's a, it's a think of like two nanowires kind of thing, two paths for electrons to go through and go through left and right channel. And in the, the right channel, you actually put some kind of a circuit, extra circuit which, which act like a detector, okay. The quantum dot from quantum point. There are some details to it, but that I'm not going to go through. But this is the actual picture on the right side. And what you actually look at when you you do a dense double slit experiment is it's unlike this um, experiment to photons. What you do here is you change the phase of this two path of electron, and the way you change the path of electron is by applying a magnetic field and varying it. So when you vary a magnetic field, the magnetic field go and get added with the momentum through its vector potential. That is, the moment you put a magnetic field. P because P plus Q into A, where A is a vector potential. So when you vary the B field, you vary the vector potential and you vary the phase. Okay. Now that's the idea. So what you do is when you vary the B field, that magnetic field perpendicular to it, you vary the phase of one arm with respect to the other. So you should get interference fringes at C, in the, that interference in current pattern. This is a double slit experiment with electrons. That's what it is, but not the way you think of it. It's a double slit experiment in a circuit. That's what it is. Okay. Now, what they did is there is a plot a graph below. What you're trying to so plot here is the visibility of the fringes. That is the visibility of the, the pattern, fringe pattern. That means the interference intensity as a function of some drain source voltage that controls the detector strength. Okay. So now what they're saying is 
when you try to increase, try to sense more and more which path the electron has gone through because the detector is attached to only one path. Okay. So your fringe will come down, fringe intensity will come down, finally it will vanish. So that is, if you, the moment you try to detect, measure which path the electron has gone to, it's exactly the measurement paradox, the measurement theory, right? Then you will collapse to, and say, okay, the electron has gone to this path or other path. So this is, this, and this is an old experiment, but there are a lot of experiments like this coming up currently. I mean, especially related to quantum measurement using, you know, quantum measurement of electron states or spin states of electrons, so, uh, like that. Okay, and uh, is there a possibility of doing a Bell type test uh, within materials using electron? It's, it's coming up, coming up as such, uh, no, no, you know, this, first of all, the electron, the these experiments are much more harder than photons because you have to control the coherence and photons can be coherent large distances all kinds of possibilities are there it's easy to send photons but the electrons always need to go through a material medium right okay. the circuit, the circuit. there all the material issues will come in picture so those things are catching up actually yeah. okay okay thank you Okay, so any other questions? Uh, any questions in the chat box? Let me see. Um, okay, there is no question in the chat box. Okay, then uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Madhu, for this interesting and very detailed talk. Uh, okay, you, you can hear us, right? Yes, yes, I can hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just want to thank, also so sorry that I got a little late because somehow I was under the impression that it's 11.30, somehow I misread the email. I'm sorry for you guys waiting. Yeah, uh, it's making, okay. making, no it's problem. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Yeah, it's thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you all the participants and yeah, yeah. now we can wind up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks.